Hi, welcome back to the second week of Manipulating Life, the Science and Ethics of Biotechnology. I'm here at the Allagash Brewery once again with brewmaster Jason Perkins. And actually, we're in another facility at the Allagash Brewery. And we're not in the most active brewing part of the facility because it's very loud in there. So what is, what is this, this part of the brewery, Jason? This part of the brewery is where we do what we call our wild beers. So those are beers that incorporate uh, everything other than just Saccharomyces yeast. So over here in this facility, we're using um, some wild yeast strains, some Britannomyces strains, Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, uh, which are both lactic acid bacteria. So a kind of a, a much wider range of those kind of microbes than are used in our main brewery and 99.9% and .9 of breweries in the world. Well, Jason mentioned a number of microbes that are used in the brewing process. And indeed, as we mentioned last week, the yeasts that are part of the brewing process are some of the oldest organisms that were ever manipulated by human beings for our pleasure, in this case, for our nutrition. Uh, and, and so can we talk a little bit more about those particular microbes? Uh, for example, the strains of yeast that you use here. Uh, how do you choose the yeast strains? It's a good question. You know, we, we make here, we make very, what I would call very yeast forward beers. Which by that I mean a good chunk of the unique flavor and aroma profiles that we want to create here. A lot of them are very much yeast driven. So some breweries might get a lot of their unique flavors from certain hop selection or heavy malt selection and that certainly is important to us but we are very much interested in the unique flavor profiles and aromas that come from yeast and there's a wide range of them. I mean there are hundreds of different yeast strains um, probably somewhere in the vicinity of 50 or so that are readily available from yeast suppliers out there and each one especially the kinds that we choose contribute very unique aromas different ester profiles so they'll produce different levels of fruit or phenolic character. Um, some will also uh, be some, there'll be some variability in how they attenuate a beer. So uh, attenuation deals with the consumption of sugars, uh, which is a big component of fermentation, of course. And some yeasts will attenuate basically all of the complex sugars that are in there. Some are not as capable of it, so the resulting beer may be sweeter or drier, depending on the, the choice of yeast. So the different yeast strains will consume different kinds of uh, carbohydrates in the food, basically, that you give them exactly. and produce different products that have different flavor profiles or aroma profiles or both. Is this correct? Very much so, yes. Yep. In terms of what we're doing in the course, this is very, very uh, interesting because what we're going to talk about this week in the lectures is all about gene expression, particularly in microbes. Uh, such as bacteria, and next week we'll go on to talk about eukaryotic organisms such as yeasts. So what Jason's talking about here is really about how a particular organism, in this case a yeast strain, utilizes nutrition from its environment, in this case sugars, and produces products because of the activation of particular genes or gene complexes within the organism itself. Different strains of organisms will use different genes or gene patterns in order to express what they need to express. Now, we interpret that expression, that gene expression, as something delicious or something marvelous to smell or both in the beers that are created here. So you definitely select then the yeasts for these particular uh, notes of aroma or flavor or both. Correct, yes. What happens if a yeast strain somehow changes its profile? Perhaps there's a mutation in the process and something goes wrong. How do you detect that? Well, that's a good question. Each, <clears throat> and each yeast strain is going to act differently in terms of how well it can uh, kind of be continually reused over time. You know, yeast is a living organism, of course, and so we can reuse the same yeast from batch to batch to batch. What we found with a couple of our primary yeast that we use over what we call five or six generations, so reuse, we start to see um, changing in performance. So they won't be quite as able to ferment the, sh the sugars quite as quickly. Aroma profiles may change. Because of that, we intentionally only go that level of five generations and then we start back again with a pure culture all over again. Now there are some breweries, some small craft breweries who have 
use the same yeast perpetually for generations and generations and are not seeing the same variability. So there's definitely differences strain to strain in terms of how kind of hardy they can be and deal with that reuse over and over again. But we're pretty careful about it because we're so dependent on those characteristics. So um, we, we just don't let it go that far. Now I gotta ask this question. Suppose there's a change in the profile of the yeast and somehow the aromas, the flavors, produce something unexpected and wonderful. What then? Well, I think if that were to happen, uh, we would certainly figure out a way to repeat and harness that because uh, that's, that's a nice happy accident. We did find uh, here in this facility in 2004, uh, inadvertently found a strain of Britannomyces in one of our beers that was not intended to have this strain of Britannomyces in it. And the character was phenomenal and now we have that culture isolated and we reuse it in several of our beers at this point in time. Oh, wonderful. So, so new beers can be born from Absolutely. accidents yeah. in the brewery Absolutely. that go back to what these organisms are eating and what they are producing in terms of their gene expression. Sure. Thanks so much for that explanation of the yeasts and the other microorganisms that make your beer. Uh, we're going to step away from the Allagash Brewery for a couple of weeks during the course now, but we will be back in a couple of weeks where I hope you will show us uh, a really unique process that Allagash has perfected for making unusual beers. What will that be? Yeah, we have a pretty unique project here we've been doing since 2007 we call the Cool Ship Project where we're making beer in a very old way, a very traditional way that most breweries no longer utilize anymore and uh, I think it'll be pretty exciting. It will be exciting, so we'll come back before week six and visit the Cool Ship at Allagash.